CQRS, which stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation, is a very interesting design pattern that we are going to explore in today's video. I'm first going to explain what CQRS is from an architectural perspective, and then we're going to see how we can implement it in our clean architecture. If you've been following along this clean architecture and domain-driven design series, so far we have been heavily focusing on the domain layer, but I think it's time that we explore some of the other layers in the clean architecture, and today we are starting from the application layer. I'm going to show you how we can implement the CQRS pattern from scratch, we will be using the very popular Mediator library for this because I personally prefer implementing CQRS using the Mediator pattern. So this is the approach that I'm going to show you today. First, let's consider what CQRS is. I said that CQRS stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation. When implementing CQRS in practice, you are going to logically split the flows for writing to the database and reading from the database. Ideally, you will also have a completely different data model for writing and for reading. In our case, for writing to the database, we are going to be using our rich domain model that we have been designing so far. And for reading from the database, we are going to use the data model that we already have on the right side, but we are going to project the data model in a way that is more appropriate to presenting it for the API consumer. Let me cover the two flows of data that I just talked about. We first have our API, which creates a command object and then sends it using the mediator pattern to the appropriate command handler. The command handler is responsible for reading the domain model from the database and applying any of the changes to the domain model that are required for the command and then persisting those changes to the database and returning the end result. On the other side, when we are initiating reads, we create a query object which is sent to the appropriate query handler. The query handler then reads from the database and then we return the appropriate response to the API. A couple of things to point out here. You can see in this diagram that I have only one database, but you might have been told previously that CQRS is a very complicated design pattern. You need a read and write database, you need event sourcing and all of that complexity, and this is simply not the case. You are fine with just using one database for both writes and reads. And if the time comes for you to scale your application, then you can think about having separate read and write databases, using event sourcing and all of that additional complexity. But to start out, you're perfectly fine with just one database. And this is the approach that I'm going to show you in this video. Let's move over into the code and see how we are going to implement the CQRS pattern. If you've been following along so far, you know that we have already added the CQRS pattern to some extent. Here I have the create member command and the respective create member command handler. Let's first talk about how this command and respective command handler are connected. In the create member command, you can see that the create member command is inheriting from the iRequest interface, which comes from the mediator library. I mentioned that we are going to use this library to implement the mediator design pattern so that we can associate our command and query objects with their respective handlers. First off, what is a command? A command represents an action that we want to perform in our system. You can see that we have named this command the create member command. So the naming convention is action that we want to perform, in this case create member, and we append the command suffix. On the query side we do the same, we say what the query returns and we append query to the name of the query object. The create member command is supposed to contain all of the information that is required to correctly execute this command. In this case we have the email of the member, the first name and the last name which is the required information for creating a new member in our system. Again, following the convention, we are naming our handlers the same as the command, so create member command and appending handler to that. I suggest that you follow this convention in your applications because it makes it much easier to navigate through all of the files. I've seen some approaches where people define the handler for the command inside of the command class definition I generally dislike this approach because 
I like to follow the one class per file convention. And also I tend to split my commands and handlers into separate assemblies sometimes. So this approach is even not possible with some architectures. The create member command handler inherits from the iRequest handler, which again is coming from the mediator interface and represents a way for us to connect our command with the respective handler implementation. So this is taken care of by the library. We don't have to think about this. This is the standard approach and you would follow this same approach when implementing the query and query handler classes. I'm going to show you my approach to implementing CQRS, which I find much more explicit than this one. What we are going to do is define our own command and query abstractions. So inside of the abstractions folder, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it messaging, for example. Inside of this folder, I'm going to add a new interface which I will call I command. I'm going to use the file scope namespace, get rid of these using statements. I'm going to make our interface public. So to make this work with mediator, all I have to do is inherit from mediators I request. And now I can use this in place of the I request and everything will work just the same. I'm going to take this a step further and define a standard response that all of our commands should follow. In this case, when I have a command which does not return any data, I want it to return an I request of result. I want all of my commands to return a result by convention so that I can know if the command has failed or succeeded. Let's also define one more interface. This is going to be our generic command, which does return a response of type response. This interface is going to inherit from I request and it's also going to return a result but this time our typed result of T response. Alright so I have two types of commands one which does not return a response and one which does return a response and they both return a result object wrapper. Now I'm going to define an interface for our command handler definition so let's go ahead and add a new interface. This is going to be called I command handler. I'm going to again use the file scope namespace, get rid of these using statements, make our interface public. And I want our command handler to be generic. So it's going to accept an argument of type T command. And it's going to inherit from I request handler coming from mediator. I'm going to pass in t command as the first argument and result as the expected return type. I also have to add a generic constraint that t command can only be a type inheriting from i command. I'm going to add one more interface for the command handler that does return a response. So again, i command handler. This time the generic arguments are t command and t response. We inherit from, and I'm going to move this to a new line. We inherit from i request handler. We pass in t command as the first argument. We return our result of t response because we want to return all our responses inside of the result object. And I'm going to add a generic constraint that says that t command is a type that inherits from I command of the response. All right, so this is our command handler definition. Let's see how we would use it. I'm going to go back to our create member command. You can see that we have a command that does not return a response. So the appropriate interface in our case would be I command. With this change, we can get rid of this using statement. Making this command inherit from I command we have broken our create member command handler implementation. We have to make this inherit from I command handler. Add the using statement. And now this part is fine. We just have to fix our handle method. So I have to make it return a result instead of a unit, which was coming from mediator. Of course, we also have to actually return a result. So after we have successfully added a new member, we return a result success object. So far, I covered how we would define our own command and command handler definitions to register everything with mediator inside of our web applications program.cs file. 
I'm using the dependency injection extensions library from Mediator, which exposes an add mediator method on the iService collection interface. You want to call this method to register Mediator with your application, and you want to pass in the assembly where you have your command and query handler implementations. In our case, this is the application assembly where I created an assembly reference class so that I can make it easier to pass in the assembly argument. If you are wondering where this assembly comes from, I created a simple static assembly reference class and inside of it, a static read-only field which returns this assembly. Back to our program.cs file. I want to comment on a few more things going on here. Here we have the call to add controllers, which wires up all of the dependencies required to use controllers. And I also have this add application part call, where I specify the presentation assembly, because I like to define controllers outside of the web application, and this is what you have to call to wire everything up with ASP.NET. Over here, I'm using the Scrutor library to scan the infrastructure and persistence assemblies and register all of the classes inside of that assembly as the interfaces they are implementing and I'm registering them with a scoped lifetime. I want to show you that our command and command handler definitions actually work. So I'm going to go over to the members controller. As you can see, I have a base API controller defined. I'm going to show you what I have inside. All there is is a protected read-only iSender field, which is coming from Mediator. You can use this interface if you want to only send commands and queries. If you want to publish notifications, you would use the iPublisher, or you can use the full iMediator interface if you want to be able to perform both operations. I only want to be sending commands and queries from my controller, so the iSender interface is all that I need. I'm going to close this now, back to our members controller. Let's create a new endpoint for creating a member. I'm going to make this endpoint be a post endpoint. It's going to be async and return a task of iAction result. I'm going to call it register member. I'm going to create a new command and it's going to be a create member command. So let's pass in an email, for example, my email. And the first name and the last name. All right, now what I need to do is use the sender field that we have from the API controller and call the send method on it, pass in our command. Additionally, we can send a cancellation token if we want to support cancellation, which I advise that you do. So all you have to do is add an additional parameter here and ASP.NET Core will take care of providing that cancellation token. Now we can pass the cancellation token to the send method. Remember that our command returns our result, so let's capture that inside of a variable. If the result is a success, let's return an OK action result. Otherwise, let's return a bad request, and let's pass in the error coming from the result object. All right, let's see this in action. I'm going to place a breakpoint here at the start of our register member method. I'm also going to go to the create member command handler and place a breakpoint at the start of this method as well. Now I'm going to start my application. I'm using Swagger, so it's going to open up the browser for me. And here is our endpoint that we just defined. I'm going to go ahead and execute it and we hit our controller as expected. Let's create our command. I'm going to press continue here, and what I expect to happen is I hit the breakpoint that I placed inside of the create member command handler. All right, this behaved exactly as expected. Let's walk through our handle method. We create an email, a first name, a last name. We now create a new member, add the member to the repository, save the changes using the unit of work, and at the end, after everything has completed successfully, we return a success result. We're back in our controller endpoint, and here let's take a look at our result object. We can see that the is success flag is set to true, so in this case we are going to return an OK result.
back in our Swagger UI, you can see that we get a 200 OK result. So this was our command side. I'm going to follow a similar approach for the query side. I'm going to add first a new interface that is going to represent our query. So I query, move to file scope namespaces and remove the unused using statements, make our interface public. All queries should return some sort of response. So I'm going to define a T response generic argument and I'm going to inherit from I request coming from mediator. I'm going to return a result object as we did with the commands and return T response as the generic argument. Let's go and add our query handler interface. I query handler, move to file scoped, get rid of unused using statements, make our class public. The iQuery handler interface is going to have two generic arguments. The first is going to be T query, which is going to represent the type of the query that we are handling and the T response, which represents the response that the query is returning. It's going to inherit from I request handler of T query and return a result of T response. And we have to define a generic constraint where we say that T query is a type which inherits from I query of T response. All right, now that we have our query handler definition, let's see how we would use it. So inside of the members folder, I'm going to add a new folder called queries, and I'm going to define a new query for example, get member by ID. And inside of it, I want to define my query class. So get member by ID query. All right. Move to file scope namespaces, get rid of these using statements, make my class public, sealed. And I want to use records for my query definition. What I need for my query is the ID of the member. So I'm going to add a member ID property. I'm also going to need a response object for our endpoint. So I'm going to create a new record here, which will be called member response. And let's say, for example, that all I want to return is the ID of the member and the email. All right. So now my get member by ID query will inherit from iQuery which we just defined and return member response as the result object. All right, I'm going to move the member response into its own file and let's go ahead and create our query handler. So I'm going to add a get member by ID query handler class. Fix this up very quickly. All right, so our get member by ID query handler inherits from iQuery handler, which we just defined. It handles the get member by ID query and it returns a member response. So let's go ahead and implement this. I'm going to fix this so that it's nicely visible on the screen. I'm going to make the method asynchronous. Here we have a couple approaches for how we can implement our query handler. One of the approaches that I've often seen is just injecting the database context from NED framework into the query handler, writing your link you query and just returning the response. That's one possible approach, but here you are tightly coupling your query handlers with NED framework. Another approach is using repositories, which is the approach I'm going to use here for simplicity's sake. If you want to make your application layer completely decoupled from your data access, in this case, on the query side, your best option is to define some sort of abstraction which you can use inside of the application layer and which you will implement inside of the persistence layer. So let's go ahead and do a simple implementation here. I'm going to create a private read-only field for our member repository, inject it from the constructor, and let's see how we will implement our handle method. First off, we need to fetch the member from the repository. So I'm going to call the getById method on the repository, pass in the member ID coming from the get member by ID query and the cancellation token. Notice that the getById method returns a nullable member object, 
the member will be null if it was not found in the database. So we have to handle this accordingly. If the member is null, we are going to return a failure result. So I'm going to say return result failure, specify member response as the generic argument, and create a new error instance. For the error code, I'm going to say member dot not found. And for the message, I'm going to use a string interpolation to define our error message. I'm going to say the member with ID of request member ID was not found. All right, and now let's define our response object, which is going to be member response. I'm going to pass in the ID and the email coming from the member. All right, and let's return our response object. So this is a very simple query handler implementation. There are many ways to go about this and you can use whatever you are comfortable with. The approach that I personally use is to define an abstraction for accessing the data, which I use in the application layer and implemented in the persistence layer so that my data access logic is decoupled from the application layer. Inside of our members controller, let's create a new endpoint, which will be a get endpoint. It's going to accept an ID from the route and we are going to use this endpoint to get our member from the database. So get member by ID, the ID coming from the route and the cancellation token. Inside of our endpoint I'm going to create a new query object which is going to be the get member by ID query passing the ID from the route get the response using the sender coming from mediator pass in the query and the, oh i missed the cancellation token so i'm going to add it pass in the cancellation token and in this case since our response is of type result let's for example return an okay result if it is successful so i'm going to say if response is success return okay of the value coming from the result object, which is going to be our member response. And if the result was not successful, I'm going to return a not found and pass in the error object. Let's see if our query and query handler implementation works. I'm going to add a breakpoint here, and I'm going to add a breakpoint in the get member by ID query handler. And let's run the application. All right, here we have our endpoint. I'm going to specify some random GUID and call our endpoint. We hit our breakpoint as expected, we create a new query instance, and we send the query using mediator. We hit our breakpoint in the query handler as expected. Now we are fetching the member from the repository, and notice that we got a null response, so the member was not found in the repository, and we return an appropriate failure result. Back in our command handler, we are going to return a not found result, and pass in the error instance. So this is how the API response looks like. We get the 404 status code, which is not found, and the error object within the response with the appropriate code and the message. This was the introduction into the CQRS pattern. I showed you how I approached the CQRS implementation with my custom command and query interface definitions. In the future videos, I'm going to expand on this topic. I'll show you how we can use the mediator library to introduce some very interesting behavior, for example, for validation, logging, exception handling, and so on. If you like this video so far, consider leaving it a like. Definitely subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And until next time, stay awesome.